Hey guys, Duke here. Now I bet you probably already have several questions that you're probably already typing in the comments section, but I will answer them in due time, so stay with me here, because today I have for you a very peculiar mask. It is the M48 Chemical Biological Aircraft Apache Aviators Mask. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a long history on this one, so bear with me. Skip ahead several minutes if you don't really care about that. But getting into the history, in the 1980s, the U.S. Army needed a new protective mask for its new Apache helicopter crews, and the current aircraft protective mask was the ABC M24, which was good for smaller rotary wing aircraft, but for something as technologically complex as the Apache, they needed something a bit more integrated. The first solution was the M43 series. Adopted in 1986, the M43, which I actually have one here, you may have seen it briefly in one of my other videos, this one belongs to Moulage, um, but the M43 was constructed of an entirely um, butyl face piece, which was um, patched permanently into an integral hood assembly. It featured a um, several point VREU or variable resistance exhalation, or I guess in this case, inhalation unit, which allowed the airflow to either be directed in at the uh, the mouth or around the eyepieces, or in some cases, it would be directed up into the hood through a ventilated patch system, which would provide uh, positive pressure to the entirety of the face piece. It had a central outlet valve on the bottom with an M40 style voice emitter, which would simply flip open to reveal the valve. Kind of an awkward position for, you know, a valve like this, uh, you know, having a voice emitter in front of it, but, you know, and then also it had the... Uh, a variable resistance exhalation unit, which would effectively limit the amount of airflow which exited the mask so that the entire system was positive pressure. It was also fitted with a drinking system and a integral microphone, obviously, as aircrew masks will be. And the peculiar feature of these lenses allowed them to be used with several uh, night vision devices, optical devices, and most importantly, um, and not in the case of this example, because this is a Type 2, which I will get into what Type 2 means in a moment, but uh, with, in the case of the Type 1 M43s, the iHads, or the uh, integrated helmet and display sight system, uh, which was a, an integral part of the Apache Aviators Ensemble, which allowed them to basically integrate with the uh, the main gun on the bottom of the uh, aircraft, and basically wherever their head moved, it allowed them to move the gun. Um, but anyways, the M43 series was intended for both the Apache crews, which it was the Type 1 configuration, and the Type 1 masks had a notch on the right lens, which this mask does not have. It has a perfectly rounded lens, um, so make, and there was also the Type 2, which is what this face piece is. And the Type 2s were just intended for all general aviation, uh, you know, all rotary wing aircraft other than the Apache crews. And so uh, that was all good and well, but they needed a little bit more protection. In 1991, the M43 was upgraded as the M43A1, which simply changed the, um, the type of battery used in the blower unit so it was more commonly accessible, I believe, or less dangerous. I'm not sure of either of the two. But the main feature was that the hood was now double skirted so it could integrate with the uh, aviator's integrated battle, uh, or AU, I, uh, and aviator's uniform integrated battle, I believe it was called, or the AUIB, which is pretty much just the battle dress overgarment or chemical protective suit for um, air crews. But anywho, the hood was now double skirted to integrate with that, but not much else was changed. Maybe some slight changes to the microphone. And there was also a proposed M43A2, which I mentioned before in the LW Papa review, which did use those blower units, but it was never ultimately adopted. Uh, around 1996, or at least it was finalized in 1996, the M48 and M49 masks were developed. The M48 was essentially just an M43A1 uh, Type 1 that had a the newer lightweight blower unit, in this case the C420 as it's now pro uh, popularly known as, um, but back then it was just called the M48 blower or a lightweight motor blower assembly, um, and the M49 was essentially just an M43A1 Type 2 intended for all general purpose aviation crews. However, uh, also around 1996, the M45 chemical biological mask was adopted, effectively negating the need for the M49, and so the M48 was adopted as the standard for the Apache air crews, and so the M49 was no longer existent, um, but they also had a problem. They, they really could not afford to produce more M48s because this was a very expensive and labor-intensive mass to produce. The eyepieces were patched in by hand. The hood was patched on by hand. There was a lot of expensive and high-tolerance components on the mask. And so 
what they had to do was ultimately they figured out around 2003, sometime before, uh, workers at Pine Bluff Arsenal found out that they could remove the lenses on M43A1 Type 2 and M49 masks and re-cement on the notched Type 1 eyepieces, which I will show in detail in a moment because I didn't give you a good impression of what the Type 1 lenses are like, but they were able to convert M43A1 Type 2 and M49 masks into M48s. Confusing, I know. I'm, you're probably lost as I am at this point, but... Nevertheless, uh, around 1990, uh, or excuse me, around 2003, the M48 uh, production had increased, and they were able to convert all the older masks into M48s, which is actually what this mask is, because my particular example is dated 1995, indicating that this was originally an M43A1 uh, that was converted into an M48. So, with all that aside, let's get into the details of the kit itself, uh, starting with... The manual here, which is probably the biggest mask manual I've ever handled, probably it's about the size, around the same size as the XM28E4 manual, which you can go ahead and check out, out that review if you want a size comparison, but this is a beefy ass manual. Pretty much everything to do with this kit is just gigantic, and probably one of my favorite features about the M48, or just the M43 series masks in general, I just passed this page, um... Uh, to the M48 and M43 series masks do not have any form of lens outserts on them. Give me one moment. There's a spider in here. I will get rid of that in a moment. And as you can see there, they approve sun dust and wind goggles for use with the M43 and M48 series masks because the mask had no official lens outsert system. And so literally what they would do, especially if you needed laser protection, because um, obviously it was easy to find the M48, I mean, the sun dust and wind goggles with laser lenses, what they would literally tell you to do strap sun dust and wind goggles over the front of the mask like so and that was good enough for them so if you ever wondered why there's no lens outsource for this mask you're looking at them right now uh moving on probably the more um infamous and well-liked component of the kit is its carrier this is by far the most monstrous and gigantic mask carrier i've ever handled i don't know exactly what all the in different pouches and things are meant for but let me tell you there is a lot of dead space inside this carrier there is a lot of storage room obviously this is a big mask a big kit but uh, just this is astounding you could fit everything in this thing but really not much else to say about this there is there's a variety of accessories i am unfortunately missing from this kit like there was a smaller face piece bag where the uh the blower was mounted on your body and then you would have a smaller um uh, bag to carry the face piece, uh, and then you would also have a web belt to carry the blower unit, and then there would also be a twist lock mount for the blower unit itself, so that it could be attached to the um, the pilot's seat or the gunner seat just beside them, and that that could obviously be removed and attached whenever they needed to. Um, so the, that is those accessories are unfortunately missing. I will be trying to get an M43 face piece bag sometime in the future. I know where to get some, but uh, that's not going to be uh, right now. So. Other components of the kit include a lithium sulfur dioxide battery for the blower unit. This is before they int uh, introduced the rechargeable batteries, which are much longer, and you will need. That's why some C420s will have those green caps on one end, is to accommodate the longer rechargeable batteries. Um, but this uses the older uh, lithium sulfur dioxide, which uh, unfortunately is a bit dead. I can't. It still runs slightly, but it's it's pretty much dead. You have some M8 chemical detector paper. Not much to say about that, just dye impregnated paper that changes color when in, in exposed to certain chemical agents. You have a preventative maintenance um, checklist sheet, uh, which basically details on what all to check for with the mask when you're servicing it and you're getting it ready for use, uh, getting it zoomed in on the details of that. Probably still blurry, but you know what, you get the idea. So, not really much to say about that. Just a nice little flashcard set that my camera does not want to focus on because it's a shitty old phone, but... There we go. And that's really all you need to see. There's not a whole lot in this. Moving on from that, there is also a spare microphone assembly. Uh, this is the uh, microphone dynamic. Um, doesn't mean, uh, it probably says the model in there. I'm too, I can't be asked to read it right now. Uh, it does come with a, a set of spare comfort cushions. These are uh, foam cushions that are self-adhesive that fit on the internal surface of the eyepieces um, in order to make the mask more comfortable because the reason the lenses are so small like this is because they are very close to the eyes. The, the manual even states in some cases that some soldiers or some 
aviators may need to trim their eyelashes in order to use these masks because they are extremely close. Like, and the weird thing is they offer a very good range of peripheral vision. Uh, I cannot think of a mask that, uh, it, this is like literally a modern optical mask. Um, these are still in use today as far as I know. Uh, I did not mention that. They are slowly being phased out with the MPU-6U joint service aircrew mask, um, but which is pretty much, again, another modern optical mask. But uh, nevertheless, these are still slowly getting phased out, but as far as I know, they're still in use. Um, the only other accessory that I have is this big wad of um, decontamination mitts, M295 per individual decontamination mitts. Uh, they're, they're very interesting. It's weird how it just comes with a huge bundle of them. And usually with, you know, standard field protective masks and whatnot, it only comes with one. But this one has an entire bundle of these. And really, uh, the only other thing to mention before I get down into the individual details of the kit is that there was a couple different variants of the M48. Uh, the original M48, as it was designed in 1994 or so, or the, the, late, the early 1990s, as it was adopted in 1996, it would have had a two-inch hose, and it would have had an angled connector so that the blower, uh, that the hose would come off at a right angle, and the blower essentially could be strapped this way around to the uh, pilot's survival vest. It was a very weird and awkward setup. It was they were trying to make this pilot mounted and trying to suspend it off of the the left shoulder, but it didn't really work out. And by the time they figured out how to adopt the or adapt the uh, the older M forty three A one Type two and M forty nine masks into M forty eights, they decided that it was better to just keep the or the original. 3-inch rubber-coated Herbert Cooper nylon and wire-reinforced hose, and uh, just have a straight shank connector, as you see here. I have never actually seen an M48 example with one of those angled connectors, so if you find one, consider yourself lucky. Um, but anywho, that's really all there is to say about the exterior. I will try and get a close-up of the face piece on a few details, and then I will show off the interior and probably wrap up the review for you guys, because this review is going to probably drag on quite a bit. So, uh, before I move on from the hose, as you can see, there is an equipment clip on the hose that you can adjust the position of. It's just a rubber ring. Uh, this is actually the same type of clip that's currently in use on the M51 uh, chemical biological tank protective mask or armored vehicle crewman's protective mask. Basically, just an M50 with a hose on it for CVC crews, but it uses this same type of clip, I believe. Um, clo getting a close up on the mask, you can see the point between the lenses. If you can see, there are two pegs right there. And what those would be for is for something called an interpupillary distance staple. And what that would basically do is there was several little bridge-shaped brackets that would fit between those two pegs, and that would effectively pinch together or extend the distance between the lenses in order for it to fit the distance of the aviator's eyes, similar to the adjustment rod of the M2 10A16 lightweight optical mask, but this is a bit more complex and overly complicated. Now, obviously, you have the, as I already showed, that has the the uh, the air deflector dick, as I like to call it, up the side, which would basically inflate the hood and uh, provide positive pressure. You have the uh, variable resistance, or the airflow adjustment clock, as I like to call it, on the side here, which has several positions that basically uh, convert the airflow either inside the mask, up at the lenses, or into the hood. And, of course, this has a... Uh, an M40 MCU style uh, voice emitter over the uh, variable resistance exhalation unit with a just a standard, uh, this is one of the later uh, exhalation valves of the upgraded green ones, which is also inside there. It's a little bit dirty in here, might need to clean that out, but nevertheless, that's there. Um, not really much else to say about the exterior. Um, again, the, the hood is double skirted, as you can see, whereas the older M43, if I can get that down here again, as you can see, the, the older M43 has no skirt on the hood, uh, or it does have a skirt, it's just not double skirted. And then meanwhile, the the M48 uh, would have been double skirted, because again, it's an, basically just an M43A1 that's been converted. Um, but that being said, there's not much else to see. Um, one of the more hilarious features, again, uh, probably the last thing for now, before I show off the interior, is this little tab right here. Um, you can't see that probably very well, but that little tab right there, um, is not to rotate the drinking system. You would literally flex the rubber with that tab in order to move the drinking tube into your mouth. I mean, it works. It's just kind of amusing that they went with that, and it's like everything else on this mask is so high-tech, but yet everything that's basic is just very simple, and there isn't a whole lot to it in terms of uh, its function. But um, 
that's pretty much it in regards to the exterior again for like the third time, even though I keep thinking of new things to say, but um, nevertheless, I will pause the video here and I will show off the interior for you guys. All right. Now that I have the harness inverted and the hood inverted as well, I can show off the details of the interior of the mask. As you can see, there's not much to this mask. It does not have a inner or nasal cup per se. It sort of has an integral one because of the close fitting nature of this mask. Uh, you can see the chin groove on the bottom that allows sweat to drain. The M171U, I believe it's called microphone. I could be wrong on that. Again, I didn't study the microphone terms very well. Uh, and it could either use these or the uh, more common M101 uh, slash AIC microphone. Uh, it really depends on if the helicopter, what type of communications equipment the helicopter is installed with. Uh, and as you can see, I have the uh, comfort cushions, uh, the foam padded cushions installed on the interior of the lenses for uh, additional comfort, obviously, and to, to provide padding and relieve eye stress while wearing the mask. You can see the odd drinking system throughout the back there where it has a uh, sort of a barb with a hole on the end of it. It's very uh, horse cock looking, if I were to put it vulgarly. And you can move it with that tab, as I mentioned, towards your mouth on the inside. And then over on this side, you have an airflow deflector, uh, which obviously deflects air. Not at the lenses, obviously, because uh, it's uh, far from the lenses, but you have this weird vinyl tubing system. I don't know if you can see that very well, because it's kind of dark, um, but it goes around. Uh, but it's basically the TSO deflector system of the mask. And then you have these little holes on each side where the air would vent and defog the lenses. Um, and obviously, as you can see, um, it has this little notch here uh, in the lens, and that, that cutout, that sort of step there, is to allow for the iHads uh, display monocle to integrate seamlessly with the mask, so you can see through that properly, even well masked. Um, and obviously the Type 2 masks would not have this, they would just be perfectly rounded on both lenses. Um, and just to give you an example, uh, or a sort of a comparison, here is uh, Moulage's M43 Type 2. And as you can see, his does not have the uh, comfort cushions installed, but as you can see, both of his lenses are perfectly rounded. His is missing a drinking tube, unfortunately, but his also does have the M101 AIC microphone right there, and you can also better see the uh, the vinyl deflector system. Uh, hopefully you can at least. Again, it's very dark on my camera. I don't know if it's, it's probably going to be better on YouTube, but overall the harness system is the same. Not much different about it. Um, so uh, you can get a look at the, uh, the label on the hood itself, uh, and as you can see, there is a manufactured date of 1995, meaning that obviously this is, as I mentioned before, an M43A1 that was converted into an M48, and then uh, basically it was made by MSA. Uh, I'll show off the chin stamps in a moment here once I get the harness inverted again. The head harness is very peculiar because it is sort of a hybrid skull cap system where it is entirely mesh. Again, this would be better if I was sitting down, uh, so let me move some stuff over here so I can. Um, but obviously, it uses a mesh, uh, sort of a five-point harness. I can't really call it that because the, the fifth point is so large because the... Uh, the skull cap is integrally sewn into the mask itself. This is like uh, a very weird concept because every the hood and the harness is like completely integral to the mask itself, and it has a single adjustment point for the temples that just goes all the way across. It's just permanently sewn onto this side, and then the two lower straps have this sort of weird swiveled bridge uh, with them, and it extends the buckles. Like they could have just sewn them down here. Uh, or attach them down here, but they they decide to extend them for whatever intents and purposes. So that's very odd, maybe for some sort of repair purpose. And then you have this uh, quick don tab down here made of the hood material, although you can't really quick don these, at least from my experience. Uh, although my medium is a little bit small, I probably need a large. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It's, you know, you, you don't get these. It's not something you can find in quantity. So I'm very thankful to have one regardless. And then, obviously, uh, giving you a better look how the harness is literally just sewn through the rubber, as you can see. Very amusing how it's, they just did it like that. Um, again, if my camera would focus because it is a piece of shit. Oh, come on now. You can do better than that. There you go. So you can see there, harness is just completely sewn through the rubber. Um, not really much else to say about the interior. I will invert the harness again. Uh, I probably missed something that I'll remember after the video. I'll be kicking myself for it, but... You get the general gist of things. Um, the only other... Oh, glad I did remember. The, uh, the forehead mesh. So basically... Uh, that dick thing on the outside uh, right of the mask leads up to this sort of um, pocket, this perforated pocket integrated into the hood, and this is basically where all the air comes in and inflates the hood, positive pressure, and as you can see, it's reinforced or sort of uh, 
uh, basically there's like a wire mesh cushion inside of here that prevents this pocket from collapsing so all the air can be distributed evenly. Uh, very interesting concept. I haven't seen a lot of masks do this. It seems to be mostly an air crew thing, um, but nevertheless, it's there. Um, so that being said, I will invert the harness again uh, and I will wrap up the review for you guys. So uh, talk to you soon. And with that, that is pretty much my review on the M48 Chemical Biological Aircraft Apache Aviators Mask. And isn't that a mouthful? Uh, the only last thing to point out is the markings, the size stamps for this mask, are usually on the chin. And I will go ahead and remove the drink tube here so you can see them better. Uh, it's quite tight in here, but getting that out. You can see United States, medium. Uh, and then next to that, you can see a date roundel of 1995, made by MSA. And it was made in the second quarter of January. I don't see any other dots anywhere else, so that's basically when it was made. January 1995, half of the, half of the month. Um, so, again, that's basically it. There really isn't anything else to say about this mask. I mean, there probably is, but it's nothing that I have on the top of my head and nothing that I could really analyze and fully cover in this review. So, that being said, if you have any further comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them down in the comments below as always. I'm Duke, and I will see you all later.